On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, a submersible en route to the sunken Titanic has gone missing. I'm your host, Sal McCoglano. Welcome to today's episode. So a lot of news stories floating around right now about this story. I thought I'd provide you some background and some context to the story. I have no news about where these people are, what's going on with it. What I want to do is give you the information on the background of it and what could potentially be going on. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, so the tour group is a group called Ocean Gate, and Ocean Gate runs these uh, tours through their submersible, what's called the Titan, down to the Titanic. It costs you about a quarter of a million dollars to take this ride down to go see the Titanic. Titanic is in about 3,800 meters of water. To put that in the context, the ocean pressure at that depth is 380 times that of normal sea level pressure. So a great deal of pressure. You take this with a sense of caution because any mistakes at that depth could be catastrophic. So a lot of media outlets are covering this. I went to just this one here from the BBC. Titanic tourist submersible goes missing with search underway. I want to go over to the one here on G Captain by Mike Schuller, which I think has some great details that I want to expand on, especially for my audience and talk about it. So this outfit, Ocean Gate Ex Expeditions, is based in the United States, Everett, Washington. And right now, search teams are heading out from uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Matter of fact, marine traffic is tracking three tugs. We'll talk about this in a second. Heading out to that region right now to assist. At the same time, the U.S. Coast Guard's 1st District is providing resources to coordinate the search and rescue. So, number one, I would say do not sit there and think that no one survived yet. That's not where we're at in that. This is a search and rescue operation. Uh, this submersible has provisions so that the people inside can last for quite a long period of time. We don't know what has happened yet. And it's quite possible they've lost power or lost communication. So there's, there's a variety of different things that can be going on here. Uh, thinking the worst is not the best thing to do in this scenario. You don't know, and therefore, unless you don't know, and you're within the window of time when they can still be saved, you operate in that provision. I've been a firefighter for 20 years. Believe me, this is what you do. You don't write anybody off, and they should not be written off at this point. There's still a window, and we're gonna talk about that window here. New story from Marine Traffic, Three Tugs, The Polar Prince, Copen Hobson 1752, and Horizon Arctic are on the way. You wanna get search area covered. You want vessels out in this area searching. This submersible could have, I mentioned before, lost power, lost communications have come to the surface and it's bobbing out there. This thing is the size of a truck. It's really hard to find in the North Atlantic. If all its radio, its transponders, is everything's out, you need to be able to find it. So getting assets and platforms into position as rapidly as possible is what you want to do. This is the closest point. St. John's is the closest point to where the Titanic went down. And so therefore you wanna send these resources out. This is the Coast Guard Northeast. This is the first Coast Guard district. This is the district that covers New England for the United States. They've put, been put in charge of this. So from an hour ago, a Coast Guard C-130 crew is searching for the overdue Canadian uh, submarine, uh, overdue Canadian research submarine approximately 900 miles off Cape Cod. Uh, goes on here, Rescue Coordination Center Halifax is assisting with a P-8 Poseidon aircraft. P-8s are U.S. Navy uh, anti-submarine, but they have radar, they have a whole batch of sonar equipment on board too, sonar buoys that can be dropped. And then just a few minutes ago, the U.S. Coast Guard is searching for a 21-foot submersible from the Canadian research vessel Polar Prince. The five-person crew submerged Sunday morning, and the crew of the Polar Prince lost contact with them approximately one hour and 45 minutes into the vessel's dive. So while the vessel was de descending down to depth, as I mentioned to you before, the Titanic's at 3,800 meters. Uh, this is not something you take very lightly. This is the website here for Ocean Gate, uh, privately owned company. They basically focus on increasing access to deep ocean through this use of submersibles and launch 
platforms. They have a fleet of these five person submarines that are capable of reaching depths of up to 4,000 uh, meters. Uh, the, the company was founded by Stockton Rush, the CEO of the company, allowing people to take dives onto wrecks and areas that beforehand were really inaccessible. This is the Titanic expedition that's going on right now. So they're talking about the fact that this is the first one. They were a series of dives planned, 18 of them during the summer of 2023, is giving the massive scale of the wreck and debris field. Multiple missions performed over several years will be required to fully document and model the wreck site. This longitudinal survey to collect images, videos, lasers, and sonar data will allow objective assessment of the rate of decay and documentation of the process. Goes on here, each team of six mission specialists will join the expedition for a 10-day mission, eight days at sea. The entire expedition is comprised of five mission legs. And what they're doing here is making these dives on the Titanic, the debris field, and really document the loss. The Titanic is degrading immensely in this depth, collapsing onto itself. And within a few years, there really won't be that much left of her. This is the submersible. This is the Titan. This vessel is about, is again, the size of a truck. And when you look at this, you get some ideas. So it's got a depth rating of 4,000 meters, 1,300 feet or 13,000 feet, excuse me, they're operating at 3,800 meters. So close to their limit. However, these vessels are tested for much deeper. There's a lot of safety provisions built in there. Five people on board, a pilot and four crew, in this case, crew slash passengers. This is a submersible. Submersibles are not submarines. They're not designed to stay underwater for long periods of time, and they're not designed to go very far. Basically, you have to drop them on top of where you want them to go. They have some propulsion to keep them from being bashed by the current so that they can do it. Lots of times you have to make your descent up current from where the Titanic is, descend down and let the current kind of push you down toward where the Titanic would be and then you're using what power you have to maintain your depth down at that but most importantly the key thing i want to make you aware of here is that this has life support for 96 hours for their five person crew so they have a finite period of time about four days of life support that's available and that's why i think it's very important to understand that just because they've lost contact they could have lost propulsion they could have lost electricity could have lost communications they could still be alive on board and that's one of the reasons why this is being viewed as a rescue at this point very important not to get ahead of this story one of the other reasons this is guarding a lot of attention is because one of the people on board is this person person Hamish Harding who's the chairman of Action Aviation here's his uh, Twitter page he talked about on June 17th I am proud to finally announce that I joined Ocean Gate Expedition for their RMS Titanic mission as a mission specialist on the sub going down to the Titanic this is his Instagram uh, on the same thing uh, due to the worst winter in Newfoundland in 40 years, this mission is likely to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. A weather window has just opened up and we're going to attempt a dive tomorrow. We started steaming uh, from St. John's. This was posted a day ago. So this is the latest we have on it. If anybody's telling you anything different right now, it, it's after I've done this video. I've been watching this, looking at all the information that's out there. I'm following OceanGate. Uh, that is the company that's overseeing this. I'm following U.S. Coast Guard Northeast, following the, uh, the Canadian Coast Guard, and those are the news sources I'm waiting to see some more information from. Uh, this is a dangerous dive. Uh, the Titanic has a unique fascination with people. I mean, I, I, I got to say, I, I have a unique fascination. I got a friggin' Lego Titanic right back there that's been in the backdrop of my photos for a while. I've been working on this thing for a year. Uh, Titanic has a fascination. It draws a lot of people in. So again, not unusual for people to be doing this. Uh, is this cheap? No, it takes it's big money. It's a quarter of a million dollars to go do this aspect. But one of the things I've talked about a lot on this channel, and I'll say time and time again, is that the ocean is beautiful. It is amazing. When you're out on the ocean, it is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorite places in the world to be. However, I'm a trained firefighter. I'm getting ready to train firefighters on water rescues in my local district. And the thing I tell them is this. 
is water doesn't care about you. It hates you. It wants to kill you. It has no feeling towards you whatsoever. You can love it. You can enjoy it. But understand, it does not like you. It will do everything it can to kill you. And you have got to be vigilant and always prepared for emergencies when they happen. I am hoping with all my heart that that, that Titan has just lost communications, that they are basically uh, just out of communications and they're going to be able to find them and rescue them because any incident at depths like this is over very quickly. Let's put it that way. It, it, it is, it is, there's very thin margins for error here. When something bad happens, it happens very quickly at those depths. And if you look at what happens to submersibles and submarines that go into deep water and go beyond certain limits, uh, it, it is not a enticing image at all. It's quick, it's fast, but it is not something uh, that I, I really would want anything to happen to anybody with. So again, thoughts and, and concerns and everything with family members and with those crews right now that are working to help find Titan and bring those five crew members back up. Anyway, latest information we had on this, obviously leave some comments, leave some uh, uh, things. If you know more than I do, please do. By no means am I the definitive uh, go-to point on this. Uh, a lot of going on on this story. Uh, my background is beyond being a merchant mariner. I did my master's in maritime history and nautical archaeology, so I know a little bit about underwater research. And and uh, although I've never worked in a submersible like Titan, I've seen the work that comes out of them. I know the, the parameters they operate under. It's one of the reasons why we've switched over to ROVs and remotely operated vehicles to take the human factor out of it. But the human factor is really important at some times because there are things that humans see that, again, robots and automated don't. This is a this is a not a great story. Uh, if you can uh, subscribe, like, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and if you can support the page, how do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below, or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly and yearly subscriber. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.